So I'm a huge fan of flankers, fragrance flankers. And today we're gonna to talk about my top 20 fragrance flankers coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Looking, Feeling, Smelling Great. That's right, we're gonna talk about my top 20 fragrance flankers. Um, so I've got 20 here. And these are my favorites in order from number 20 all the way down to the number one. And uh, of course, there are other flankers out there, but this is what's in my collection. And this is what my top 20 is. Some of these are on their way out. They have been discontinued, but I wanted to include them in here because I really love wearing them. So let's go ahead and get started. My number 20 is Kuros Odete, this right here. What I like about this one is it was not Kuros, but it was Kuros. So the unique thing about Kuros Udete is that it had this like aquatic touch and not going like a seawater, seaweed aquatic. It was just very fresh, but still you have that kind of like civety, animalic, cumin kind of um, background in it, but not overwhelming. So you can actually wear it in the summer and smell like Kuros, but not like be overwhelmed by the scent. One of the better flankers, and actually there's another f better flanker than this one out there, and I'm drawing a blank with the name. I think it came before this, and it's it's a little better, but this Kuros Odete is quite, quite nice, and if you like Kuros, but you think it's too heavy or too something, but you want that Kuros signature touch, you might want to check this out. You can still find bottles out there, but uh, it's kind of on its way out. It is the old YSL, of course, um, but um, great, great scent. Um, it came out in 2001. So Kuros Odete, number 20. My number 19 favorite flanker is Be Men by Mugler, or Terry Mugler when it was first launched. It launched in 2004, so it was 96. 96 it was Amen, or Angel Men, then it became Amen. In 2001 they launched, uh, well it was unisex, Cologne. And then in 2004 they launched Be Men. This is my fifth bottle. And the reason I, why I like this one is the fact that it's the Amen Mugler DNA with licorice and anise. So really, really love licorice, anise, or um, anise seed, or star anise. And this really captured it perfectly. And I wore so much of it. Um, I had just bought a bottle and I spent one Christmas in New York City and I wore this a lot and it just, it just smelled great. And it's too bad it was discontinued. Hopefully they'll bring it back. But uh, B Men is probably, and my favorite flanker from the A Men uh, flankers, but I, I had to put it in the, the back of the list because it's not that easy to buy. So. B-Men, number 19. So my number 18 favorite flanker is CH Men Grand Tour or Grand Tour by Carolina Herrera. Now, what do I like about this one? I mean, there was so much hype around CH Men that um, they started releasing these flankers. And um, CH Men is a fun fragrance. It's, it's kind of maybe leaning uh, younger. But I liked, what I liked about the CH Men Grand Tour is the fact that they added Mate, a tea note that kind of butched it up, maybe made it a little more older. Uh, and it, it peeled a little older, I guess. Still it smells like CH Men with some herbal tea-like note in it. I really do like this one. It's too bad it's very, very limited, but it's a great, great flanker to the original CH Men from Carolina Herrera. So CH Men Grand Tour number 18. My number 17 favorite flanker is Guerlain Homme Le Boise. So this is not Guerlain Homme, it's the Le Boise, so basically woody water I guess it translates to. And it's mostly vetiver with citrus notes. It's not anything like the original Guerlain vetiver, but it's a unique fragrance and I really really love this one. It was a more recent discovery about two years ago but uh, enjoy wearing Guerlain's Le Boise from the home collections. If you haven't checked this one out and you are into vetiver fragrances, you might want to do some research and figure, uh, find out about it. It's not all about the Guerlain original vetiver. They also have another vetiver for men and it's called uh, Homme 
Le Boise, and it's number 17. So my number 16 favorite flanker is a new one that came out just recently, probably a few months ago, and it is Gucci Guilty Absolute, this bottle right here. And what I like about this one is the fact that it's completely different than the previous editions of the Gucci Guilty series. It's more masculine, it leans a little more older, it's more, it's got more classy, classiness to it, it's got more sophistication, and that's what I really like about this one. And I really enjoy it, plus it's vetiver and uh, woody notes, so it's a great combo of notes. And the bottle is just gorgeous, as you can see, I've used up and I've actually decanted some to some friends and some folks, uh, giveaway winners and stuff, but I really, really do love this one. I think it's a great step towards getting better releases out from this brand as I had dismissed them since Gucci Rush, which was in the early 2000s, was the last Gucci fragrance I bought. Although, I always forget about the Gucci Pour Homme too. But anyway, Gucci Guilty Absolute number 16. Do check it out if you haven't. At number 15, one from Chanel, and it is uh, Allure Homme Edition Blanche right here. It's not Allure Homme, and I know they have multiple flankers in the Allure collection from Chanel, but this one's my favorite. It kind of has this like a lemony, uh, creamy lemony kind of a flavor added to the uh, original Allure Homme, which I never really got into too much, but lately I'm actually liking that scent, so I might actually have to um, check that out again. But I really do love this one. I think this is my favorite flanker from that whole collection of Allure Homme fragrances. It's a little more difficult to find at, you know, basic retailers, but uh, like Neiman Marcus carries this one. And, uh, but like Nordstrom used to carry it, but they don't carry it anymore. I don't know if there's some exclusivity thing happening, but if you search around, you can find it. Unfortunately, also, they don't sell a lot of Chanel fragrances online. It's mostly you have to go into the store. And the other thing is when I was in Europe, there's actually um, a 150 ml bottle version of this. So a larger, like almost double the size. This is 100 ml, which was really a great, great deal, actually. So perhaps next time when I run out of this one, I will pick that one up. But Great, great flanker from uh, Allure Homme collection by Chanel, and I think you should check it out if you haven't yet. It's Allure Homme Edition Blanche at number uh, 15. So at number 14, they're kind of similar to the, each other, but I actually prefer this one more than uh, Allure Homme Edition Blanche. This is Mandarina Duck Black Extreme. There's the uh, Mandarina Duck Black, and then this Extreme is the Eau de Parfum, the, uh, the perfume uh, edition of the Black. And this one's really, really rich smelling. Very, very underrated scent. This actually smells more like Uden by Zerzhov compared to Edition Blanche, but it's kind of in that same tonka bean um, citrus kind of family. But this one just smells really, really nice. If you're looking for an alternative to Zerzhov Uden, this is the perfect alternative right here because they're very, very similar. But again, Zerzhov is a lot more classier, but still this smells really, really nice. So if you don't know it, do check it out. Mandarina Duck uh, Black Extreme from a very, very small brand, designer brand from Italy called Mandarina Duck. So check it out, number 14. So number 13 is another Mugler flanker. This is, um, this is the second of the five I have in here, of course, because Mugler launches lots of flankers. But this one's the one that's actually was very, very limited. And this is Mugler A Taste of Fragrance, which was also known as Pure Chili because they had started the Pure series and then they called this A Taste of um, Fragrance. But wow, this was like one of my, like when I, what happened was I kind of dumped fragrances around the mid 2000s and went very light. I started wearing a lot of light fragrances like Joe Malone's and things like that. Uh, I was experiencing burnout and then I came back and I jumped at this fragrance because I was like starting to get into all the hype of uh, the uh, you know niche quality type fragrances. And this one, when I first got this one, I was like, wow, this is so, so awesome, this fragrance. It's um, spicy, it's gourmand, it's just, you know, plus that Mugler DNA, just a great, great scent. And really like got me into exploring uh, more Mugler um, flankers and and of course, uh, getting into niche fragrances and, uh, and so forth, but still smells great. It's very peppery, has a gourmand touch, and uh, it has a, like a creamy background as well, but it's also very like, uh, amen, you got that uh, kind of uh, patchouli uh, 
signature patchouli touch in here. So a taste of fragrance. It's very, very hard to find this one probably. Right now, I haven't searched for it for ages. I've got a half a bottle left and I'll cherish it for a while, but it's a great, great release. Amen, a taste of fragrance at number 13. So at number 12, this was a recent discovery for me. It's from the House of Hermes. We've got two from the House of Hermes here. And this is Tel de Hermes Flanker Outre Fresh. This one right here. And what I really like about this one, it's the citrus with kind of sort of like a Tel de Hermes a DNA with cumin. Um, the cumin is very fresh and aromatic. So it's got this like it's got this like liveliness about it. It does hint a little bit at the cumin of the body odor variety, but um, it doesn't go full on there. And that's what I really, really love about this one. And I just had to have it because I think this is perfect for spring and summer, especially warmer days. Um, wow, it, it, it's just lovely. Um, when I first bought Taylor Hermes, it was in 2006 when they had just launched it. And I'd read an article about Jean-Claude Elena in a magazine called Departures that's uh, for American Express subscribers. And in there they mentioned how Jean-Claude Elena created um, uh, the Tale de Hermes, the original, the, the Eau de Toilette. And I bought it in 2006 and I took it with me to my very first trip to Paris and I wore the heck out of that fragrance. Um, I got tired of it after a few years. I also had the Parfum edition um, and then I dismissed this one when it first came out, but now I'm really, really in love with it. So do check it out, Eau Trade Fresh, from the Tale de Hermes a series of fragrances by Hermes. I got this big bottle because it was such a great deal, I couldn't pass it up. So we've got another Guerlain fragrance in here at number 11. This is Vetiver Extreme. So what do I like about this one? This is... I mean, I've worn so much of the original Vetiver, I had to jump to the Vetiver Extreme. Some say there's not much difference and I get a little bit of difference. It does have more density, plus what I pick up is like a light hint of licorice or anise. So just adds a unique touch to the Vetiver that I really love from Guerlain. So it's very classic smelling, it's, it's Guerlain of course, but the Extreme just has that unique touch to it that I really like and that's why I've got it in here because I'm also such a big Vetiver fan. But I had to put this at number uh, 11. So Vetiver Extreme by Guerlain is number 11. So number 10, I've got two fragrances at number 10 because they're very, very similar. Same brand, just one targeted to men and women. It's from Tom Ford and it's a flanker from the, for the original Noir and it's Tom Ford Noir Extreme. But why I want to put the Tom Ford Noir Femme, which doesn't even say Femme on it right here, I wanted to put this in here because these two are very, very close. Like they're so close, just this one has a little bit of more floral touches compared to this. But it's what a, I mean, it's a great, great scent. I just love that whole um, pistachio creamy ice cream uh, note in here. And it's a little more amped up in the female version or the femme version. But again, it's almost the same scent. This one actually has better longevity on me than this one too so I kind of more prefer more this one because you know it just does the job better and that scent is just lovely lovely it's it's uh, I don't I guess I don't understand why they went with the femme version which is also very similar to this plus this was a flanker to the original Tom Ford Noir so it's a little confusing to me but they should have just made one unisex version I guess in this bottle so anyway either way number 10 Tom Ford Noir Extreme or Tom Ford Noir it's just called Noir but it's called I mean it's um, it says Tom Ford Noir but it's called Tom Ford Noir Femme so that's number 10 so number 9 another Mugler flanker this one is the bright sunshininess of the Amen uh, with ultra you know the orange blood orange um, combo of notes uh, of ultra zest. Why is this one up here so high? Because there was a complete unique take on the Mugler DNA and I just love that juicy blood orange note in here, the juicy citrusy take on the Mugler DNA that I really really love. So it's very very unique for me and I love wearing it. It smells great, uh, almost like orange a tang if that makes sense with Mugler DNA but it's not, that's not doesn't smell cheap, it smells still smells great and um, I absolutely love it. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, do check it out. Crypto Mint is a follow-up to this 
uh, and uh, that people are saying it's similar to this. They're kind of similar, but not. It's depending on what mood I'm in, I would pull for. But this is really, really good um, flanker to the original Amen. And it's Ultra Zest at number uh, nine. So at number eight, we've got one called Lalique Ange Noir a la Extreme. This right here, this one didn't get the hype it should have gotten because it's such a like improvement upon the original release Ange Noir. This one is got more classiness and it also has similarities to um, Chanel Sycamore and uh, at a really, really great price because you can find it at the discounters. I bought it from the Lalique boutique in uh, Paris but because it was not available anywhere. But now you can find cheap deals on these for like 50 bucks, 40 bucks. So if you haven't tried a la Extreme, a la Lix, un Crenoir, a la Extreme, uh, go check it out. Um, I guess people are also complaining about the performance, but the smell is just awesome. So what we've got is back to the house of Guillain. And this time it is Habit Rouge dress code, this right here. A great, great flanker, unisex flanker of the original Habit Rouge, although it's, it's targeted to men. But it adds like this praline note and a gourmand touch to the original Habit Rouge, the classic men's masculine scent. And it's a really, really great, great um, release from uh, the house of Guerlain. Now they've changed the bottle and I've heard different things from different people that they're doing different bottle for this fragrance each year but I'm not sure how true that is but currently it looks different. This was the first release two years ago. Now it's a darker bottle. It's a, not a clear bottle. I don't know if they're going to change it again but um, do check out Habit Rouge. I really highly recommend it and I have a review here as well for this fragrance. You can Check it out and find out all about it. So Habit Rouge Dress Code by Guerlain. Going back to the house of Hermes. And this is a flanker to the original Equipage. And this is Equipage Geranium right here. So I've totally fallen head over heels for the, this version of the Equipage, the Geranium version. It's so fresh. It's so spicy. Uh, herbal spicy because the Geranium adds this pepperiness to it with herbal touches that I really absolutely love this one. I mean, I do have original equipage in the vintage formulation, but this one just does, does it for me so well. Smells excellent and it's perfect for warm summer days, I think. It has a little more oomph to it, like it has more depth to it compared to other fragrances I would wear in the summertime because this has that pepperiness from the geranium, but I really, really love this. And if it's kind of underrated, a lot of people don't talk about it, but I highly recommend it if you like that kind of scent, um, uh, do check it out. It's got the classic touches of the uh, original Equipage, but um, this is the Equipage Geranium. That's number six from Hermes. So at number five, we're in the top five now, we're going to the house of Dior. We've got some Dior's in this um, top five and a few Mugleas. I'm just giving you um, a heads up of what we're gonna see. But number five is a flanker to the awesome, awesome 60s launched fragrance called Eau Sauvage. And this is Eau Sauvage Parfum. This right here, three notes, um, bergamot, myrrh, and vetiver. Those are the three notes. And actually, I just found out that there is a new version of this that's just launching this year, 2017. But this one is one of the best flankers ever uh, from designers. I just love the scent. And the original edition here from 2013 is when I bought this. Has excellent, excellent performance. It's an excellent scent and it's, it's just an awesome, awesome release. I don't know if I run out of this juice right here if, if the new edition is gonna be different, but then again, like I said, there is a 2017 edition that's coming, that's just launched and I'd like to check that out. But this edition, if you haven't tried it yet, do try it. To me, it's completely different than the original Eau Sauvage. So you might, uh, not blind by it. I mean, if you like the freshness of the original Eau Sauvage, this one's not going to be much fresh. It's going to be pretty um, dense. It's going to be heavier and ha it performs excellently. So do check out Eau Sauvage a Parfum uh, from Dior at number five. Now my next one, um, I have to apologize, the bottle is kind of messed up and it's a Mugle, so those plastic bottles um, were, were screwy and I couldn't spray it. So uh, at number four, we've got Pure Havane. And here's my bottle. Of course, I had to take, take it out of the rubber because it just wasn't spraying and the sprayer is here. Um, so what I 
like about this one is the Mugler DNA again with the tobacco and the honey and the almost cherry-like quality that you get from it. One of the better flankers, of course, not the best, but one of the better flankers and loved wearing it. Just love, love wearing it in the cold, cool weather. Smells awesome. Really, really does. Mugler Pure Havan, number four. Number three, we're going back to the house of Dior and this time we've got Fahrenheit Le Parfum. Okay, this one is Fahrenheit without the gasoline or um, petrol note that's in the, the, the original Fahrenheit. And what they've added is leather and, um, and then bourbon vanilla. The violet's still there and it's a very, very cozy, boozy scent. Just lovely. Just really, really lovely scent. Um, this is my favorite Fahrenheit. I mean, this is the only one I have now. I do have the Absolute as well. But this one just really does it for me. So do check it out if you haven't. Performance is excellent. I wonder if they're going to do something different with this one like they did with the um, uh, Eau Sauvage. They're, they're just making all these different flankers and things. So we'll see. But if you can get your noses on the original Le Parfum Fahrenheit from Dior, I would highly recommend it because it smells so good. So Fahrenheit Le Parfum is number three. And that's by Dior. So number two, going back to the house of Mugler. This is my last Mugler here. And this is pure malt. Of course, everybody knows pure malt. This is the whiskey boozy take on the original Amen Mugler DNA. This is the best flanker to me. I think it smells great. It's truly unique take on the, uh, the uh, Mugler DNA. I mean, if if the B Men was still being made, this would be uh, that would be up here. But it's not. But you can still get it. But next to the B Men, this is just perfection right here. Um, Great, like, like the Pure Havan, this one is excellent in the cold weather. Although I think the recent formulations are not as good, but um, it still smells excellent. Just that booziness just does it for me. And I love boozy fragrances, so that's kind of why this is up there. So Pure Malt, number two. And that's by Mugler, the house of Mugler. And then finally, last but not least, my number one from the house of Dior. And we've got Dior Homme Parfum. Pure class all the way. Um, it's sexy, it's powdery, it's leathery, and it's got hints of rose in there. I think it's just perfection, I, I, absolute perfection. I can't get enough of this scent. This is just, just. I, I think it just it's the perfect update, flanker, recreation, remix, whatever you want to call it. Uh, of the original Dior Homme. I mean, the original Dior Homme line is great. Dior Homme Intense was even better than Dior Homme for me, but I wanted something more from Dior Homme Intense, and so sure enough, they came out with the Dior Homme Parfum, and I think it's just to die for. If you don't know Dior Homme Parfum, do check it out. I think you'll pretty much like it. I'm, I'm sure you will. There are the haters out there, because I think they're kind of into their Dior Homme or Dior Homme you know, Dior Homme um, Cologne or something like that, or the Dior Homme O. Um, but I think this is just perfection. Best designer release for a long time, at least to me. Do check it out, Dior Homme Parfum, number one. So there you have it, guys, my top 20 fragrance flankers in my collection. What do you think? Did I miss anything that's really excellent out there? Perhaps I don't have it in my collection. Perhaps I do. Um, I would have extended the list to things like Gucci Pour Homme 2 or things like that, but I just wanted to keep it at 20. I actually was gonna do a top 10, but I decided to do a 20 because I had a lot more. And this is my top 20. This is an, a great list of flankers. If you're on, on the hunt for flankers, this is where you should start, especially for designers, mostly designers. And then we've got Guillain, who's not designing clothing or anything, but they do have makeup, so it's mostly designers here. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. Please uh, put down what your favorite flankers are. Let's get a conversation started. Also, please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Like this video, please share it, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel so that you don't miss out on future videos and giveaways, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.